wonderful. Another day where love and mercy, peace and kindness is following us. What a day to be alive and what a day to be in church together. You may be seated. Thank you. Well, this morning, it is a great honor and a great privilege for us to have Pastor Bijou with us from Gateway Church in Mumbai, India. And Pastor Bijou and his wife and church there, Heads Up Vision Rescue. We've seen a number of vis uh, videos over the years as we've wanted to get more and more involved. And it is a great honor for us to, to have Pastor Bijou. I want to encourage you this morning. Do you know, God has chosen to send us a man from India to speak into our hearts. That's how much he thinks about us. And I want us to open our heart this morning to God's servant. Who knows what seed is going to be planted in our hearts this morning as a result of Pastor Bijou's ministry to us. So let's open our heart. Let's be expectant. I'm telling you now the precious seed of God that the servant of God sows in the heart of God's people can really change this city and this nation and who knows where. So come on, let's honor Pastor Bijou as he comes. He's going to minister God's word. Let's honor God's servant this morning. Good morning, King's Church. Boreda. It is so good to be in Newport at King's Church with you all. And uh, before I move forward, let's take a moment to pray. Abba, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We want to thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for your amazing presence in our midst. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are here. Lord, you have brought your people together for your purpose, Lord. Your children have come here to have an encounter with you, to hear your voice. Lord, speak to everybody, Lord. Touch every single person here today. Let nobody go back the same way we came. Jesus, we need you. Holy Spirit, I give over. You take over, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So good to be here. I bring you hot and spicy greetings from India. It is, it is such an honor to be um, here um, with my friends, my dear friend Rajiv Menon, all the way from Mumbai. And my dear friend Sam Mooney from Northern Ireland who lives in Norwich now and Sam is heading Vision Rescue in the United Kingdom and uh, it's so good to do the journey with people. And thank you so much Pastor David and Pastor Faye for having me here, for having us here and for the opportunity to bring God's word and I'm so grateful to God that he would choose, choose me to stand here at a, as a testimony to the saving grace and the resurrection power of Jesus. So this church has really spoken into my life many, many years ago as I was studying at the Bible college, at a Bible college in England along with Sam. Um, one thing that really kept me going was the cassettes that came from Pastor Ray Bevan. So... <laughs> And, uh, you know, I love the Welsh accent. I believe you have the best, sweetest accent ever. You could just, when Pastor Faye was standing and talking, I could have just sat there listening to her for the whole time. It is so beautiful. Maybe you, because you hear it all the time, you don't realize. It is so sweet and pleasant to your ears. And, um, but you have to talk, listen to me for the next 40 minutes. God bless you. <laughs> and uh, my wife, my only wife, and my three children, and our three children, they send their regards to you. They're back in India, in Mumbai. And um, I want to thank you all. 
as a church i want to thank you all for standing with us and supporting vision rescue as part of your heart for the house you might never have been to india some of you might never have left the country but simply by being part of simply by being planted in a church that has a heart for the nations you are touching the nations of the world i want all of you to stretch your hand let's do an exercise look at your hand and say i've got long hands you've got so you your hands are so long that your hands have reached out to children in mumbai bringing education healthcare <laughs> nutrition empowerment how did you do that you have done that by being planted in a church that has a long hand i know that this church is not an inward looking church this church has a heart for the nations of the world and i want to thank you for being planted in this church so if you are still not planted if you are still checking out coming and going i want to encourage you get planted the bible says those who are planted in the house of the lord flourish in the courts of the lord god's plan for your life is that you flourish and god's way for your life your family your marriage your business your career to flourish is by you being planted in the house of god and uh, so so stop being a consumer and start being a stakeholder a shareholder get planted sign up to be a volunteer become a kingdom builder you know give towards the the heart for the house and i believe your life will change so i've got a there is a small video i think it's there we have sent it's about a couple of minutes i want to show you that video for you to see what you have been doing this is little outdated because we keep moving forward but it's a little snippet for you to see what your heart for the house has contributed towards so can you play the video please thank you for many living in the slums there is a slum mentality that this is the only way of life with no escape and their children have no other choice but to follow the same path they are put to work left to raise their siblings married of young or left prey to being trafficked into domestic service or prostitution but that doesn't have to be the story and we know that when you educate a child then you give them the power of choice and can set them on a different path our thought was simple if you can't get the people off the streets if you can't get the people out of the slums then get the slums out of the people our approach had to be innovative our ministry to the children living on the streets and the slums of india and the slums of india with the bus program started with the bus program but to rescue many to more rescue children many more children we have to think we outside have to the think bus. outside the bus this is the first this is the first of what we hope of what we hope many more will be many more rescue community centers community centers operating in the slums as a focal point, a focal point for transformation. point for transformation all of our programs all of our programs has developed has developed slum communities, slum communities where, communities where, communities we, work, where we work and this has allowed us this to begin to change the model of change the model of how we become even more become even more in 2012 2012 we opened our first opened school our first inside slum inside slum a school inside slum school inside a community and understanding of the importance of the importance of it that it is possible that it is for the children to have a education have a education and there is and hope. there is hope the beacon school the beacon gives school 120 120 the opportunity for the opportunity for early education it stops bad top stories and be told to be and get children and get on the right path on the right path the critical age between 4 between 4 and 
Sir. And we are beginning to and see the fruits, fruits, of, see this the fruits of, of this bridge. Students going on, students going formal on education. to formal education. Together, Together we can reach out a we helping, reach out a helping to, empower, to empower and free children and from free children every form of exploitation. exploitation. Bringing hope, bringing hope, dignity, dignity, and freedom to and choose, freedom the, best, to choose the, best the best possible life. Possible life. You can be that you person. You can be that person. Who says, I can who do says, something. I can do something. And I want to see this transformation, see this transformation for thousands, for thousands more children. This is our vision. This is our vision. And this is vision. And this is vision. Thank you. So on behalf of every child that you have touched, I'm here to say thank you. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you abundantly. And through our partnership, because of our partnership together, we are able to touch on a monthly basis, we are able to touch more than 48,000 people in the streets and slums of Mumbai, Chennai and Calcutta. And I believe together we can make a difference. We can do a lot more together. Awesome. <clears throat> are we ready for the word of God? Yes. Proverbs chapter 11. Sorry, Proverbs chapter 24. See, you can see I need glasses. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 11 and 12. Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering toward slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? It's a very powerful, powerful passage of scripture which has become one of the foundational scriptures for all that we do with Vision Rescue. And I really believe in this passage, the Holy Spirit has made it very clear about the purpose of existence of a child of God in this planet. I believe as a Christian, as a born again believer, as a child of God, your purpose of existence in this planet is to be a rescuer. It is to be a deliverer. It is to be a difference maker. It is to be a world changer. For a long time I thought, as a child growing up in a Christian home, I thought the main purpose of salvation was so that I can go to heaven. It was a ticket to go to heaven. If the primary purpose or the main purpose or the only purpose of our salvation was for us to go to heaven, God could have saved us and take us up, taken us up. But God has kept us alive in this planet, in this world for a purpose which is way beyond our natural abilities. It is way beyond what I ever thought or understood. For us to have a proper understanding of this passage and our mandate and mission of being in this planet, we need to go to, go to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and 2, very, very critical to understanding Everything in the Bible. So before God created man and woman, he created everything else, right? Created everything. So when he created everything, he created all living beings with seeds inside them with the capacity to reproduce and recreate in their own likeness. Reproduce themselves. By way of creating everything with seeds inside them, God gave an implicit command. There was an implicit command given to every living creature to recreate according to their own likeness, their own image. Right? God really set that in motion. Set that whole thing in motion. And then God said, let us create man in our image. Think about it for a moment. Just to make it more clear, God created created the elephant and said, you are an elephant, you will create other elephants like you. You are a coconut tree, you will create other coconut trees just like you. Then God is saying, 
let us make man in our image so how was man created man was created to be like god isn't it so god created man and he put him and you know created adam and eve we know the story created man and woman put them in this planet for a very specific purpose to rule over to take dominion yes. over this world yes. to be in charge of this planet psalm 115 verse 16 the bible says the highest heavens belongs to the lord the earth he has given to man all the galaxies all the the whole universe belongs to the lord including the earth but the earth he gave it to man he said you take charge you take dominion rule over the fish of the sea birds of the air every living creature that moves on the surface of the earth i am giving them to you now as long as man walked in obedience to god everything else will obey him as long as man lived in surrender to god everything else would surrender themselves to him surrender themselves or be subject to his authority now just think for a moment if if man and woman had lived in obedience to god as a result of this father son loving relationship and did on earth whatever god wanted what would this earth have been like this earth would have, would have been like heaven right why do we call heaven 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 is the ideal place okay why is heaven the ideal place because whatever this loving gracious sovereign all knowing god wants happens in heaven there is nobody talking back to him there right he orders it happens okay now but on earth it was different because god created man in the image of god this earth would be like heaven the god's kingdom or god's will will be accomplished on this earth only if man lives in obedience to god hears from him and executes on earth his will right now we know as a result of man's disobedience even adam's disobedience when they disobeyed god what did, what what happened actually the authority or the mandate that god had given the right that god had given man and woman to rule over this earth they handed it over to the devil as a result what has happened instead of this earth becoming like heaven the devil has made it like hell right the bible refers to the devil as the ruler of this world who made the devil the ruler of this world god never god made adam and eve the rulers of this world how did the devil become the ruler of this world because adam and eve gave it over to the devil that is why in luke chapter 4 after jesus got baptized he was in the desert fasting the devil had the tenacity and the courage to come to jesus and tell him you worship me i will give you everything hello why because adam and eve handed it over to the devil as a result every problem that you see in this world is a result of that one disobedience every problem that you see in this world is a result of devil taking charge of this world being handed over from adam and eve i come from india pretty obvious looking at me right <sighs> second largest populated nation in the world okay a few years ago when i came to bible college somebody asked me what is the main 
uh, industry in India, what do you manufacture the most? I said, human beings. <laughs> we, that's what we manufacture the most. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you see people. I remember when I first came to Bible college, I, with jet lag, I woke up early in the morning, like 3 o'clock the next day. I had never experienced such silence in my whole life. <laughs> it was so quiet. I, the silence was killing me. Literally, I'm not lying, I'm confession. I thought Jesus came and rapture happened and everybody went. <laughs> I walked down, up and down the corridor, like putting my ear into every other door. Is anybody awake? Anybody alive? Am I the only one left on the planet? You will never see silence like that in India. <laughs> because there are people everywhere. Now, out of the more than 1.3 billion people live in our nation. Out of the 1.3 billion, some of the richest people in the world live in India. The world's most expensive house is in Mumbai. At the same time, some of the poorest people in the world live in my nation. More than 500 million people under the line of poverty. Every year, more than 2.1 million children in India die of malnutrition, malnourishment. Out of the 40 million people globally in slavery, more than 18 million are in India. Literal slavery, bonded labor. Out of the 18 million, 8.2 million are children between the age of 5 and 14. Friends, this doesn't look like heaven to me. Actually, these people are going through hell right now. Right now, they're in hell. They're going through hell. There is exploitation happening. Slavery happening. Poverty. Murder. Human trafficking. This is not the will of God. This is not the kingdom of God. This is a result, a direct result of sin. A direct result of Adam's disobedience. But the good news is that Jesus came. Yeah. Now, why did Jesus come? When Jesus came in the fullness of time, his life on earth was a life of total obedience to the Father. When the Lord Jesus came to this world, as a result of complete, total surrender to the Father, wherever he went, he created a little heaven. Where there was sickness, there was, sickness was gone. He brought heaven there. Where there was hunger, there was abundance of food. There was, there was lack, there was broken heartedness, there was comfort. Where there was death, there was life. Even though Jesus was, is God, when he lived in this world, all the miracles that he performed, he performed as a man. He lived the life that Adam was supposed to live. When Adam failed, Jesus won the victory. He was victorious. Why? As a result of total obedience to the Father. Right? Now, we see that happening. And when he taught his disciples to pray, the main central theme of that prayer was thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow. Think about that for a minute. You know, because that is God's original plan. God's original plan in creating man and woman and keeping us in this planet is for God's will to be accomplished on this earth exactly as it is in heaven. That will only happen through his children. Now where Adam failed, the devil tempted Adam, Adam gave in. The devil tempted Jesus, he overcame the devil. And you know the Bible very well. You've had some of the best preachers in the world here, so I'm not going to preach. I'm going quickly and, and, and trying to bring a point across to you. His, 
death on the cross ultimate act of obedience now when jesus died and he rose again from the dead what actually did he do through the death and resurrection of jesus he crushed the devil's head and he took back from the devil what the devil took from adam amen he took back from the devil what the devil took from adam and he gave it to the church he gave it to us so why are we here today we are here to bring heaven on earth we are here to be rescuers we are here to be saviors we are here to be deliverers that is the purpose of existence of the church on this planet today that is why we are here the church is not a happy clubby christian club who comes together every sunday and sing songs and go back the church is here to make this earth like heaven the church is here to displace the work of the enemy destroy the work of the enemy deliver people rescue people in this passage we read very clearly rescue those being led away to death there are people not out of their own choice being led away to death walking into destruction on a day to day moment by moment basis they cannot rescue themselves one who is being led away being led to the slaughter they cannot rescue themselves only the rescued can be rescuers only the saved can be saviors only the delivered can be deliverers they need someone to rescue someone to save someone to deliver and who is that i believe that is the church that is the, only the church can do that only the church of jesus christ can save the world the church of jesus christ is the only answer to the problems of humanity church king's church that is why you are here that is why you live on this planet as a christian as a child of god that is the purpose of your existence that is the reason why you wake up every day that is the reason why you live and move and have your being to be the hands and feet of jesus now a lot of people think for me to be to for me to make a difference i need to go to bible college i need to do this that you don't have to do any of those things now i'm going to tell you my story 1996 i went back from england to india after my college studies i grew up in a pastor's home i could not even pray properly in our family prayer i used to stammer for words every day same group of people same prayer every day but i just was so nervous to do that when god called me called me for ministry i said god what am i going to do how am i going to make a difference i can't preach i can't stand in front of people i can't talk i can't even do it in front of front of my family god called me i ended up in a bible college where i met sam i went back to india in 1996 i was in mumbai for some work and i was sitting in a rickshaw a three wheeler taxi and uh, when the rickshaw stopped in a signal i saw a whole bunch of children running to the rickshaw asking for food or money now this is not common in the part of india that i come from i come from the southernmost part of india called kerala which is relatively affluent more education the most literate state in india i didn't speak the language in mumbai at that time i didn't know what to do out of this bunch of children one child really got my attention she looked around 6 years old she was only wearing an underwear hair was matted and uh, just extremely malnourished i didn't know what to do i saw fear in her eyes so whatever cash i had in my pocket i took it and i gave it to the child i thought i was helping her when the signal turned green the rickshaw got moving just out of curiosity i looked back to see something that i didn't want to see 
I saw an older girl coming and snatching this money from this child and just pushing that child away. It made me feel very angry, helpless, frustrated. I went back to my hotel room and I began to have a conversation with God. I said, God, if you are good, if you are God, if you are love, if you are almighty, which I know you are, why do you allow this to happen? Why do you allow children to suffer like this? Why do you allow exploitation to exist like this? I didn't hear any answer. But instead, I heard a question in my spirit. The question was, why do you allow this to happen? When we are alive, when the church is in existence in this world, God doesn't have to send an angel from heaven to feed a hungry child. God doesn't have to send an angel from heaven to bring education, health care, you know, to, to be the rescuer. You know, that is why we are here. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We are the body of Christ. We are the presence of God in this, in this, in this world. I heard this, but I kept pushing it off because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to start. So I went back. Um, we began to, you know, I mean, I was heavily involved in evangelism and church planting around the country. We were going to different places, spreading the good news and making Jesus known. People were responding to the gospel. But every time I would come through Mumbai and see these children, this question would come back to me. What are you going to do about this? Why do you allow this to happen? During that course of time, I got married to my wife, Seku. We had an arranged marriage from the time we first met till the day we got married. It was less than three weeks. And uh, anybody to, struggling to find a wife or husband come to India within one month. <laughs> we'll send you back with a husband or wife. 20% of the dowry goes to Vision Rescue. <laughs> now, hi, I think the pastor, we need to have a conversation. You know. <laughs> now, so we got married, we got two children. When you become a father, everything changes, right? When you become a parent, you look at everything differently. We were living in a place called Goa. Two minutes walk from the beach, very comfortable. It was a great place to come back to because I was traveling a lot, ministering around the country. End of 2003, I heard through a friend of my father about a newspaper, a, a picture that he saw in the newspaper while he was in Mumbai, about a child, about four years old, lying on the street and a stray dog lying next to him. And this boy was drinking milk from the dog. And the caption underneath that said, this dog is his mother. When I heard that, being a father, I really had a conversation. You know, I really believe it was God speaking, but it was more like a conversation within myself. You know, I felt God was asking, if that was your son, and if you had the resource to stop that from happening, would you do something? I thought I will do everything possible to stop my child getting anywhere close to something like that. If I don't have the money, I'll go rob the bank. I'll do whatever it takes. I will not let my children get anywhere close to a circumstance like that. I felt the Lord was saying to me, these are my children. And I do have the resource. You are my resource. Amen. So 2004, me and my wife, with a couple of volunteers, went to Mumbai. We bought some local burgers. We call it Bada Pao. And uh, we went outside a railway station platform. We started with six children, feeding them. We didn't know what to do. We thought we'll just, if we can stop one child from drinking milk from the dog, we'll start with that. We grew to 10 children, 15 children, 40 children, 50 children. Then we understood we could feed them, but if we don't educate them, there is no future. Because 
the reason why these children have become victims why they have why they are being led away to death the way they are right now is because somebody along the line their parents or grandparents forefathers made a poor choice yeah. right why did they make a poor choice for one to be able to make a choice they need to be aware of options yeah. they didn't have options they were not aware of options why because they did not have access to information because they were not educated so how do you change the cycle if we can bring education to a child we give that child access to information and with information that child becomes aware of options as he or she grows up and then out of that they make a good life choice and their children will not end up end up on the streets that is the philosophy behind what we do but for a child to be educated you need nutrition so we began to feed them one nutritious meal a day and began to educate them we started like that over the last 15 years by god's grace through the partnership of many of you we have been able to give more than 4 million nutritious meals to children who are malnourished and right now on a monthly basis directly or indirectly we are impacting more than 48000 people on a regular basis why am i saying this to be a rescuer to be a deliverer you don't need to know rocket science you as long as you're a child of god the holy spirit living inside of you you catch the heart of jesus step forward to do what you can do when you do what you can do god will do what you cannot do i could never have imagined a 4 million nutritious meals but i could do 40 pence it cost us 40 pence to buy food for six children i could do it out of my pocket i didn't have to ask anybody i didn't have to do any fundraising i looked at what i had in my pocket we started off and god has done what we cannot do i want to tell you the story of a young girl called dipali now dipali when she was a little child she lives in a slum with her family when she was a child she came to our bus program to our education program and we to our non formal education program we, she came through our bus we put her into school as she was in high school during a period of one year her father and mother both died her mother died of tb her father was a gangster he came out of jail once he got shot he never recovered from it he died now dipali lived with her sister who was divorced and has three children and her brother and his wife they all live in a small room no running water no toilet in that environment but despite all these odds she passed last year she completed high school she graduated from high school but she had no money for further education so our team got involved we said we will enroll you in our culinary school vision rescue has a culinary school where we empower there is young empower young children like young, young young girls and boys to learn a skill it's part of our skill training program so we have em- enrolled her in our culinary school so morning 10 to 1 she comes to the culinary school learns a skill then she has lunch and goes back home 5 30 to 6 30 in the evening we enrolled her into a computer school she learned computer skill okay now listen to this next door to dipali lives another family the mother died father is an alcoholic and sick he cannot work he is not working four children the eldest of the four is 11 years old and this 11 year old boy have to sell fish to take care of the younger siblings okay he doesn't go to school he has to 11 year old child now now this boy can sell fish but he cannot he 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 he's not able to go to the fish market which is a one hour train ride into the city to a place called kolaba to buy fish from the wholesale market and come and sell he cannot go by himself so i'm going to tell you dipali's schedule dipali gets up at 3:30 in the morning okay 3:30 am she gets up 
she goes and wakes up this young boy called Golu from next door. Wakes him up and takes a 4.15 a.m. train with him, with the 11-year-old. Goes into town, one hour train ride. And then gets a taxi, goes to the fish market with a basket. Negotiates with the fish sellers, gets the fish, takes a basket of fish with the eyes and everything. Takes it back, one hour train ride back. Sets it all up for him. Then she goes home, showers, has breakfast, gets on a train, another one hour to come to the culinary school. By 10 a.m., she's in the culinary school. 10 to 1, she learns the culinary skill, during which time her sister is acquiring the vegetables because she and her sister has a vegetable business in the evening through which they live. That is how they live. Now, one o'clock she finishes, by, the, by about 2.30 she's back, and then she and her sister carries all the vegetables to, to, the, to a place near the railway station. They set up their cart, their business, and five o'clock she goes for the computer school in the evening. 5.30 to 6.30 she's learning a computer skill. Seven o'clock she comes back, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. She is selling vegetables which is their livelihood. Okay, after 11 p.m. she comes home, they have dinner, they go to sleep by about close to 12 o'clock, and 3.30 in the morning she wakes up to go help Golu go find fish. Now, what I want to say is this. When I heard this story, I called her, I said, Dibali, you are amazing. You are a hero. But why, you already have a big enough life. You already have so much happening in your life. Why do you get up at 3.30 in the morning and go help Golu, take, take Golu? That has no benefit for you. You are not getting any money out of it. That's not got nothing coming back to you as a result of that. Why do you do that? You could have a few more extra hours of sleep. She looks at me, this, she gives me the most like surprised look, which made me feel so small. The look meant, why are you even asking me that question? She said, why wouldn't I do that? This is what she told me, you help me to get educated. As a result of which I was able to graduate from high school, I'm learning a skill. If I don't help him, who's going to help him? Why shouldn't I help him? What is her qualification to be a deliverer? She is a savior to that boy. She is bringing heaven into that boy's life. She is bringing nutrition into that whole family. Dipali is, she just turned 18 now. She doesn't have huge education, she doesn't have money. But she says, I am looking at what I do have. I've got time. I can sacrifice a few hours of sleep. I can get up early in the morning. I've got energy. I can give it to him. If I look at, if she was to look at what she does not have, she would be depressed. But Dipali is not looking at what she does not have. She is, she found purpose in being helped. She found the purpose of being rescued. She found the purpose of being on this, high, this end of having a high school graduate and having, being able to learn a skill. She's making a difference. Friend, what has God given to you? Why did he save you? Why did, you, why did he anoint you with the Holy Spirit? Why were you born in the United Kingdom? Why do you have what you have with you right now? This is for a purpose. The command that God gives all of us today, rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, we knew nothing about this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? King's Church, I want to challenge you today to, be, to rise up and be a deliverer. To rise up and be a savior. 
no matter who you are no matter how young how old how educated how uneducated you are you can make a difference jesus took back from the devil what the devil took from adam and he has given it to us so that we can bring his kingdom on earth when the church of jesus christ is in existence poverty does not need to exist in this world exploitation does not need to exist in this world slavery does not need to exist in this world hunger does not need to exist in this world we can make a difference we can bring heaven on earth that is why we are here maybe some of you are sitting here and thinking biju you are saying the worship team can come forward please he said you are i hear what you are saying but i feel like that person being led away to death my life seems out of control i'm stuck with some kind of addiction i don't have a relationship with god i messed up i don't have the confidence to call god my father i don't know how i'm going to rescue anybody because i feel i need rescuing friend if that is you let me tell you you've come to the right place you might have come here at the invitation of a friend or seen on the website but i know for sure that god has brought you here because he loves you he's got a plan for your life he's created you with seeds of greatness on the inside of you your purpose of creation and being alive in this planet is not to be a not not to be addicted or enslaved by anything or anyone it is to live a life of freedom life of dignity to be a difference maker for you to enter into that life nothing you need to do you don't need to do any religious rituals you don't need to go on a pilgrimage light any candles no nothing because 2000 years ago jesus christ Amen. the son of the living god he came from heaven to earth he died on the cross he paid the price for your sins to be forgiven and for you to be adopted into the family of god today all you need to do is say yes to him repent turn around and give your life over to him and say lord jesus i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again i believe that you are alive come into my life save me lord if you make that prayer today your sins will be forgiven you can have the confidence to call god your father let's all stand together it's a very special moment as we are all in an atmosphere of prayer and worship i want to give an opportunity for people to respond if you don't have the confidence to call god your father if you don't know that your sins are forgiven if you don't if you're not sure that god lives inside of you right now i want to give you an opp- give you an opportunity to have that confidence to have that assurance every eye is closed every head bowed in the presence of god let's give each other a moment of privacy privacy this is a moment between you and god God is not standing here with his finger pointed at you. He is standing here with his arms wide open. Inviting you, come to me my son, my daughter, come. Let me clean you, let me forgive you, let me set you free. If you want to say, Pastor Biju, yes, I want to make that decision. I want to say yes to Jesus. I want to have that relationship with God. I want to have my sins forgiven. If that is you, wherever you are, as a sign of saying yes to God, would you lift your right hand to heaven yes thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you is there anybody else you can put your hands down i want to lead you in a prayer and a confession this is the most powerful confession that you will ever make the bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that jesus died for you and he rose again you will be saved if that is you i want you to repeat this confession after me let's pray together repeat this words after me but make it your own prayer dear lord jesus i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again and that you are alive lord jesus come into my heart forgive my sins be my savior and my lord from now forever 
thank you for hearing my prayer in Jesus name amen come on church let's congratulate those who made that decision for the first time heaven is now in your heart pastor dave will tell you how to continue this journey forward rescue those being led away to death church king's church we are a rescue church we are a delivering church we are a heaven on earth church i want to thank you so much for having me here and thank you so much for standing with us i believe together we can make a difference god bless you